So you got a little preview of the scripture, but let me read it to you this morning. From John chapter 21, verses 15 through 19. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death with which would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. Here ends the reading. So I ask you, friends, has anyone asked you three times in a row, do you love me? Do you really love me? Do you love me? I don't know how much you remember about this Peter, this Simon, son of John, in the scripture. He's referred to as both. He's the one, he's the disciple that was a fisherman that Jesus called to follow him, who walked with him in ministry. He's the one that said, Jesus, I want to walk on water too. He's the one that said, I will not deny you, Jesus, when Jesus said, you will deny me three times. And he's the one that when standing by a fire on the night Jesus was betrayed, denied him three times. Peter, an eager man. This scripture happens after the tomb is found empty, after we realize Jesus has risen from the dead. Peter has, just a few verses before this, Peter has actually jumped out of the boat, swam to the shore to Jesus, even though the boat wasn't very far from the shore. He is eager. And they had breakfast together. Now, I, I love how, pra how Scripture can be really practical as well as pretty profound. So they have breakfast, and then Jesus asks him this hard question. Let's fill our stomachs first. I don't know about you, but I have difficult conversations better on a full stomach. And then he says, do you love me? Because Peter had denied him three times, Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? He's calling him to a greater account. He's calling him to account for his faith. And he's giving him an opportunity to walk back into that relationship, Jesus, full of mercy and grace, says, come to me and then feed my sheep three times. But each time it's a little different. First, he says, feed my lambs. Feed the youngest, feed the weakest, feed the ones that can't do anything. And then he says, tend my sheep. It's a little more than feeding. It's a little bit more than nourishment. It's paying attention to the details of people's lives so that we can tend to them. Maybe it's tending to a wound. And then he says, feed my sheep. Feed the adults. Feed the rest of the flock. Feed them. You see, Jesus is the good shepherd. Jesus is the one that has been tending to Peter's life this whole time, this whole ministry time of Jesus' life. He's been teaching him. He's been growing him. He's been raising him. 
And now he's sending him, go and do these things for my flock, for my people. I love reading the scripture and asking questions. I don't know if you read the scriptures and and ask questions, but one of the questions as I was reading this was, why is Jesus calling him Simon, son of John? Jesus renamed him Peter, really quite briefly after he met him when he asked him to follow him. He was to be Peter, the rock, the stone. But now Jesus is calling him Simon. I wonder if this reflects to us that Peter has backslid. Peter, who is gung-ho and excited to follow Jesus, said, Oh, I'm not sure what that means in this world if I follow Jesus. So, not his disciple. Three times he said that. And yet, Jesus comes back to him. How often in our own lives do we slide back a little bit? Maybe it's going to your parents' house. Maybe it's going back home and you've grown up and you've done X, Y, or Z with your life and you've grown through these different things. And when you go to your parents' house with your siblings around you, you all of a sudden revert revert to your childish ways. Maybe it's in a stressful situation or when you're dealing with grief, you revert back to those poor eating habits and you eat a tub of ice cream or you binge on Netflix or you put Facebook before your time with the Lord or maybe you revert back to I don't know disrespecting someone or I just trying to come up with all the examples of how we could revert I don't know what it looks like in your life But God, who is grace and full of mercy and love, comes back to us and says, Do you love me? Well, then follow me. Feed my sheep. Tend my lambs. Feed my lambs. Care for my people because they're my people and they are dear and near to my heart. So care for them. Walk with me. Don't deny me. Don't turn from me. Walk with me. I will lead you. He ends this passage with two simple words, follow me. When Peter first met Jesus, he said, come, follow me. And he did. And we come back, he says, come, follow me. Now, something else that's really cool about Peter is Peter is the rock that the church was built on. If you read the first few chapters of Acts, you will see Paul reaching out to the Gentiles. He was one of the first missionaries to the Gentiles. He shared Jesus Christ with the Jews. He performed miracles and all kinds of amazing things. He fed his sheep. Now we don't tend many flocks of sheep around here. But that was pretty common in this time. So what is it that we do? How is it that you and I can feed the lambs? How is it that you and I can tend the sheep? How is it that you and I can feed the sheep? I think the first place to start is your circle of influence. Who do you see every day? Who do you see regularly? Can you care for them? Make sure their needs are met. Pay attention to what's going on in their lives and share the love of Christ with them. All Jesus is really saying here is the first and second commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind and love your neighbor as yourself. If you love me, you will love them. Friends, we do that well here. It's so exciting. I love when there are meetings going on at the church or or life groups happening, mission trips coming about. I love how we come together to do these things. And I encourage you to continue to. 
As I reflected on this passage, I also reflected about the shepherds in my life. There are many of them. I've told you stories about a couple of professors, pastors. But today I want to share with you about it, my friend Janine. And I met her, oh, my second year of seminary. She's a seminary student, a non-traditional student. And she felt the call to ministry. So she went to be a licensed local pastor. She needed to finish her bachelor's degree so she could go to seminary. So in her 40s, she went back to college and finished her degree. And then she came to seminary. And when I met her, it was on a Sunday morning after a church service. And and we reflected upon a difficult class that everybody had to take. It's called inductive Bible study. And I tell you, it stretches you. Teaches you to ask questions. And we laughed together and we cried together. And Janine became a dear friend of mine. And what I recognized about her and what I can reflect about her is that when she's in a setting, when she's with people, she's consistent. You can rely on Janine. She'll be at church on Sunday morning. She'll be in chapel on Tuesday and Wednesday. And she'll pay attention to those around her. And if she hasn't seen someone for a couple weeks, she'll say, have you seen so-and-so? Now, it isn't a judgmental, have you seen so-and-so? They should be here. It's a, I wonder what's up with so-and-so. Are they sick? Are they hurting? Are they stressed to the max and they just need somebody to come and talk to? She paid attention and she reached out. She was somebody that I could cry on her shoulder and she could cry on mine. She was somebody that we could laugh and play and rejoice with, celebrate, study together. We could do life together. But she was a shepherd and she is a shepherd to me today because I still lean on her. Who are the shepherds in your life? The mentors, perhaps you would call them. The people who pay attention who see you, who see Jesus in you, who see the gifts in you and talents in you, and they draw them out and they encourage you in them. And who is it that you do that for? Who is it that you see the gifts and talents and can encourage? Who is it that you recognize isn't sitting near you on a Sunday morning or isn't at work for a few days or at school or isn't around where you're used to seeing them? Who is it you can be praying for or encouraging? Who is it you laugh and cry with? Tend my sheep. Feed my lambs. Who are the young ones around you? The weak. Who can we care for, friends? It's a constant challenge, it's a constant struggle, and it's a constant joy. Because our life bombards us with so much stuff. So it's when we break through that and we see everyone around us that we're truly following him. Acknowledging, yes, I love you, Jesus. I am tending those around me. We're not all called to be pastors. We're not all called to be teachers, but we are all called to tend the flock around us. So pay attention. Pay attention. And thank you for paying attention. Because I know you are. So would you pray with me? Almighty God, thank you for being a good shepherd. Thank you for tending to our needs. Thank you for walking with us. When we step backwards, thank you for helping us to step forward. Thank you for believing in us and encouraging us. And Lord, we come to you today recognizing that we need you and we need the power of your Holy Spirit to walk in your ways and to follow you fully and to tend your flock as you tend to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. 
Amen.